They are something like a Native American stone henge, the deer medicine rocks. Sioux and Cheyenne villages led by Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse camped near here in June of 1876, just days before the village moved on to the banks of the Little Bighorn, where General George Custer and much of his 7th Cavalry would be wiped out. The Sundance Lodge, that's where it was out there in the flat. History tells us Sitting Bull had a vision here during a Sundance of the coming battle, a vision of many soldiers falling into camp. Today, Cheyenne Philip White Man Jr. can show you where that vision was etched into these rocks more than 140 years ago. And there's a lodge here that's made erected by three poles and there's a feather on top. Philip lives on the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation, which borders the private ranch of Jack Bailey, where these rocks are located. Bailey's family has been friends with the Cheyenne people since they first settled in this country back in 1883 and has forever granted access to the rocks to Native Americans and others who ask permission. I went to school with the Cheyennes. I went to church with the Cheyennes. I hired a lot of Cheyennes. It's just always part of my life. There were rotting buffalo on the ground when Jack's grandmother came here with her family as a seven-year-old girl. She learned to speak Cheyenne and interpreted for the nuns at nearby St. Labray, an Indian school that to this day provides Native Americans with a free quality K-12 through education. Another thing, I have all the uh, goodies from the uh, Custer campsite. The Bailey Ranch House is a fascinating museum filled with Western history. It's very personal. This 1874 cavalry officer's buckle is among the artifacts Jack has picked up off the ground over the years. I found them down here by my granddad's ranch between his house and the Medicine Rocks. He also owns a McClellan saddle ridden by a soldier pursuing the Indians in the months following the Custer fight. Famed frontier photographer L.A. Huffman sold Jack's grandfather the brand his ranch still uses. In 1908, and our son John still uses it. And the brand is in a history book. H and a half is the brand. There's Black Wolf. So is a photo of Black Wolf, a grandfather of Philip Whiteman Jr. Jack has been adopted into the Black Wolf family. We've been adopted several times in the tribe. A Cheyenne tradition honoring close friends. We had that big fire three years ago and burned up all our grass. And the Cheyenne tribe invited us to lease their surplus grass. A white guy couldn't do that. And on his wall hangs the skull of a buffalo he shot back in 1952 on the Crow Indian Reservation after the Crows donated three buffalo to feed the children of St. Labray. And they gave them to them in the middle of the damn winter and they wanted uh, us guys to take our horses and go up there and kill them and get the meat out for the kids. And they had a lot of kids in there, school, crow kids. So that's what we did. Jack later loaned the skull to the Cheyenne for use in a Sundance ceremony. Some of the war dancers. You could spend all day talking at Jack's house. Your father's grandmother, shower dress woman. Yeah. She's the one that was at the battle of Little Bitcoin. But we've come here to see the rocks. With Jack not as young as he used to be, Philip will be my guide. It, it's got to be handed down. It can't just, you just can't learn it from a book. As we drive out on a dirt ranch road, ominous smoke from a summer wildfire appears over the horizon. Nature reconditioning itself. Philip says these rocks are not a tourist attraction, and he and many others believe they contain great spiritual significance. We'll stop several times along the way as Philip gets out and prays in Cheyenne. We don't come here to pray to the rock. We don't come here to pray to the sun. We come here to offer prayer, meditation, to connect to the energy, uh, the creator of the universe. Keeping an eye on that not too distant wildfire, Philip leads the way. You go from the east to the west as the sun rises to the sun sets. This is sacred ground. This rock is known as to the Cheyennes. That means motion picture rock. The uh, pictures that change and, and are created by this uh, rock. Images of teepees, animals, elk and bear, other mysterious images. It's a symbol of an enemy. Jack Bailey says he's seen other things here too. We see some things over there that a lot of people would not like to believe. 
But you don't have to tell that because people think it's a lie. <laughs> but it's not. You can see the lightning bolt that Sitting Bull saw in his vision. And it comes right to this deer. C.S. And there are also the names of soldiers who rode with the 7th Cavalry who left their mark on these rocks. Jack, he has uh, uh, researched those names and he found them. Sitting Bull signed it too. Right here, can you see that buffalo sitting down? There's its hind legs and it's sitting down and there's its picture craft right here. That's how he drew his name before sitting, before Buffalo Bill taught him how to write Sitting Bull. Now you can see Sitting Bull's vision here. And there on the rock is what Philip and Jack say is the great chief's legendary vision. Many soldiers falling into camp. A clash of cultures. And here you can see the soldier with the three sides with grasshopper lakes coming down into the camp like locusts. There's the camp like locusts. Whatever you may believe about Deer Medicine Rocks, there is no debating the historic significance of this place. It was designated a National Historic Landmark in 2012. Legends walked these trails. Custer and his men rode by. Native Americans still make a pilgrimage here, many leaving prayer bundles tied to bushes near the rocks. And the rocks contain some fascinating shapes. Look close and you'll see a howling coyote. On top of the rocks, a buffalo sits. And across the meadow, another mysterious looking structure known as Owl Rock. The owl is not a symbol of death merely a messenger of death. If you look. Philip finds lessons in the stone. We had to be strong like the bear and be wise like the turtle on our destiny. And the mirror reminds us to look at ourselves first. Strength, wisdom, the proper perspective, timeless and eternal values at this place that is fascinating for so many reasons, which happily has been placed in very good hands. I just like history and I like people and I like to visit.